Hello everyone. Today we're going to talk about static polymorphism. When we talk about polymorphism, by default we are talking about dynamic polymorphism because dynamic polymorphism is such an important part of object-oriented programming. And here I'm giving you an example of dynamic polymorphism. This is an example of tree parsing. We have a class generic parser and the generic parser has a member function pass preorder, which does the preorder parsing of the tree. And while parsing the tree, it invokes a function process node, which does a certain specific thing to this particular node. However, the generic parser's process node function is an empty function, which does nothing. The employee chart process parser is a specialized parser and it's derived from the generic parser. It overrides the process node function and it does some customized thing for the employee chart. In the main function, an employee chart parser is created and the employee chart parser will call the pass preorder function from its base class. The pass preorder function will call process node because the process node function is a virtual function, so it will actually call the employee chart parser's process node. So the generic algorithm of pass preorder is customized by the employee chart parser's own process node function. This is a typical example of uh, polymorphism. We like polymorphism because it uh, makes your code more clean and elegant. It helps you to write more generic code that is uh, more decoupled from other code. However, polymorphism is not for free. It comes with a small price to pay. The price is, number one, the memory cost of the virtual table, and number two, the runtime cost of dynamic binding, which is basically the code that creates and uses the virtual table. These costs are small. However, what if my profiler tells me that this is a critical part of my algorithm and it needs to run as fast as it can? And I don't want to give up on the benefit of polymorphism. What can I do? One solution that I'm going to show you in this video is we can actually simulate the behavior of polymorphism. And by simulating it, we are getting its benefit and not paying its price. Before going to the solution, let's take a look what are the things that we want to simulate. First, is a relationship between the base class and the derived class. So the employee chart parser is publicly derived from the generic parser class. Number two, base class defines a generic algorithm that is used by the derived class. In this case, the generic algorithm is the pass preorder function. Number three, the generic algorithm is customized by the derived class. In this example, that is done with the process node function. Having these three things in mind, let's look at our solution. This is our solution. The first thing you might notice is the base class generic parser now has become a template class of type T. Pass preorder function is the same as before. However, the process node function is changed. Instead of doing nothing like before, it will statically cast this object into the type of T and invoke the process node function of the type T. Now here's the tricky part. The employee chart parser is publicly derived from generic parser and the generic parser is a template class with a template type of employee chart parser. Think about it. The rest of the code is the same. The process node will do some customized thing for the employee chart. And in the, 
The main function is also the same. We'll create an employee chart parser and invoke the pass preorder function for the employee chart. The pass preorder function is a function of the generic parser over here. It will invoke the process node function. Please note that the process node function is no longer a virtual function. So the generic parser will call itself the process node function, not the employee chart parser's process node function. However, the generic parser's process node function will cast this object into a type of T and invoke T's process node function. In this example, the type T is actually employee chart processor. So eventually, it is the employee chart processor's process node function that's got invoked. Thus, the polymorphism is achieved. Now let's review the three elements that we want to simulate. There is a relationship between the base class and the derived class. That is still true. Base class defines a generic algorithm that is used by derived class which is also true. The generic algorithm is customized by the derived class and here is done by the process node. It's also true. So we are getting all the benefits of polymorphism but we are not paying any price for it. Another thing to note is from our client's point of view they can use our class as if it is a true polymorphism. They don't even care whether it's real or simulated polymorphism. This technique is called curiously recurring template. It is also called static polymorphism or simulated polymorphism. It is fairly popular in the library code because in most of the application code you don't really care about the cost of the virtual table and the dynamic binding unless the, um, your profiler tells you that this is important. But in the library code, often time you want to squeeze every bit of performance out of your code. So we are getting all the benefits of polymorphism, but we are not paying a price for it. It's like free lunch, right? No, nothing is free in this world. Everything comes in with a price except my video, which is totally free. So what is the price we are paying here? Suppose I create another parser, which is called military chart parser. And the military chart parser will be derived from the generic parser of the template type of military chart parser. Note the generic, par generic pass of employee chart parser and the generic pass of military chart parser are two different classes. They are distinguished classes that occupy their own space in the program image. Now you realized that the launch is not free. This is a typical trade-off between a program image size and program performance. Whether the trade-off is worth it, it totally depends on your application. Another thing I want to point out is, this is also a small demo of uh, TMP, Template Meta Programming. The idea of Template Meta Programming is, it moves part of the computation which typically happens during runtime up front to the compile time, therefore improves the efficiency of your program. And that is exactly our static polymorphism does. Although static polymorphism only improves the efficiency a little bit, sometimes by using the TMP technique you can make much bigger improvements to your program. The last thing that I want to point out is when some people talk about static polymorphism, they are actually referring to the template itself. 
In this example, I have a template function max, which goes through every element of the vector v and find the largest one and return it. And when function max is materialized with any different type of t, all the operators such as large than and copy assignment will be invoked with different version of the operator large than and copy assignment. And because that happens in the compile time, they call it static polymorphism. There's nothing wrong with it, it's just a different definition. I just want to clear up the concepts, so next time you hear other people talking about static polymorphism, you know which one they are talking about. That's all for today. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.